Robert from the Coco NFT team. Today, I want to show you a pretty cool new tool uh, that's out there called VR Land and how you can use it to build a virtual gallery where you can actually have chats with other people live using voice and video chat features um, and just have a cool place to share with your collectors, with your friends, with your family so they can know what are NFTs and just some of the cool stuff you can do. So what is VRLand? Well, VRLand is a project that is uh, working to build uh, really cool virtual spaces in the metaverse for people. Uh, it, VRLand in particular is one of their projects from a larger company. And yeah, I got introduced to them by a great creator named Cypher CHK. Uh, she's absolutely phenomenal. And I've had a lot of fun with the tool since then and even connected with their founder and chatted quite a bit and have just been exploring more ways that we can use this. And I wanted to do a quick video because it does take a little bit to learn how to use, but once you do, it's really cool, really fun. Um, and people are typically impressed by what you can do. Um, so I wanted to help the community a little bit by showing you a little bit about how you build a gallery like this and what you can do. So how do you do this? Uh, well, first of all, you go to vrland.io. It's going to ask for you to create an account and you'll see on this main page here that they actually have a number of various uh, templates, let's say, available to you. And the one that I really like is just, oops, simply so you would choose get a room, which is how you want to create the room. And then I really like this gallery one. That's the one I'm using in the video or in my galleries that I've been producing. So you would choose gallery and then choose generate. Um, that will then create an entirely blank room for you. Um, which is really awesome and you know gives you a lot of things to do. So for instance, I just made this room over here. I'm thinking about putting together a gallery for the NFT, oops, for the NFT Thailand community, um, featuring all of the various durian NFTs and Thai NFT artists that the Coco NFT team has collected from. Um, but as you can see, this is entirely blank and can be a little bit intimidating. You're like, how am I gonna fill this all up? Well, I want to show you. So we'll start with some of the easiest things to do. Well, first of all, movement um, is actually both. You, know, you can use the A, W, S, D keys or up, down, left, right keys. And then to change your perspective, you just uh, click with your mouse and you can drag around where you want to go. Uh, I believe it is inverted, so you might be going a different direction than you intend. And there's various controls that like you can actually have reactions in here. Like you can clap for someone, you can throw out a heart emoji for someone, and you could even do things like wave, sit, and dance. Uh, and there are other controls, as I mentioned, it does ask to use your microphone as well as your video. I'm actually gonna turn off the microphone here just to save um, bandwidth. And there is also a chat feature for people in the room as well. So multiple people can join your room and you can actually chat with them. If you do video chat, your video will appear above your head there. Uh, so a lot of fun little things that are possible here. Uh, and you can change your look direction with L. Um, and I think you can go into yeah, first person view with T. Uh, I'm going to avoid first person view for now. So how do you actually start building out your gallery? Well, you'll see here probably one of the first things that you're going to want to do is go to settings where you might have a rent. The ran it'll generate a random room name at first. So you want to just go in and change that. And that will also then change the URL that you're going to use. Oops. So in this case, let me just refresh so you can see that properly. There we go. You can see our URL is NFT Thailand because that's what I named the room. Uh, now, um, yeah, let's go to this wall over here that we can build on. So over here, we're now looking to build. We've named our room. Now we want to go ahead and use the edit button. And this is kind of the main button to do everything. And it pulls up this little admin pane that you have. Um, and this will pull in all of your various uh, things if you've uploaded anything. But let's say you haven't. This will be entirely blank for you. And that's no problem. You click this little upload button here. And now 
uh, you can see when I go to desktop, um, I want to choose my little corgi photo because I want to surface that. So that is going to pull in. And then what you're going to do is once that finishes uploading, you're then given a choice um, to what quality you want to upload this in. I'm going to choose high quality. Um, and now while this thing is open, you need to keep this kind of like admin panel open as you want to do edits. You then click on the object and there's a couple of things you'll notice here. Oh, let me pull this out so I can show you everything. First um, is this option. This is how you move it. So green goes up and down, red goes left and right, and blue goes in and out. Um, so you can see you wanna like drag it right to the wall. Uh, otherwise, what's gonna happen is if you're over here and you're looking at it, sometimes you might have it there as you're looking straight and you're like, oh yeah, that looks about right. So just move around when you're moving it. Make sure you get it like right up against the wall uh, for a nice clean look. Takes a little bit of playing around too. Uh, you can also press one of the square, the square in the center, and that allows you to kind of like free form move it around. So if you're just doing kind of like a really small adjustment, and you want to get it right, that'll do. Now this next option over here, let me pull up this admin panel so you can see everything again. This one over here changes the size of it. And each of these different squares does something different. So you might want to play around with it first. There is no undo button. So as soon as you change something, it does change it. You can't go back. So, so be a little bit careful. Um, you know, if you've got it the right way, I'll show you how to lock it down. But I'll show you a bit. So the gray ones all do like a, a scaled pullout. So if you go here, you'll see it kind of scales in all directions. That's the same over here um, and with this one up here. Then each of the colored ones, this little blue, green, red, changes it in a direction. So blue, oh, blue, oh, maybe not. Okay, green should change the height of it. Yep. Uh, so if you, you know, be like, I don't know, maybe you want it to appear really funky. Uh, red changes the width of it and you can make it huge. Um, and then these other ones kind of can flip it around, which is really helpful. I'll explain that in a bit. Um, and yeah, purple will kind of do the same thing of like flipping it on an axis. Um, so yeah, so that's a bit about what this one does. This helps you resize it. Um, so maybe once you've resized it, you can go back here and then reposition it. So it's, you know, maybe you want it in the center of the wall like that. Um, and then this last one, I'm actually gonna pull it towards us so that we can fully appreciate, oops, what this one is doing. I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller and let's pull it towards us a bit more and pull it down. Okay, so this last one over here is the rotation tool and it's a little bit complex uh, because this platform does support not only still images, but you can see here, the last things it does support is kind of those 3D objects. So that's where this is really helpful for. Uh, but when it comes to images, sometimes when you upload, it might show up in reverse, or maybe you know you see it's facing me here, but if I wanted to put it on the back wall or on one of like the left walls over there, you're gonna need to rotate it. So let's actually go ahead and do that as our example. So let's say I wanted this piece um, to come with me over here and I want it on this wall, well, you're probably wondering like, okay, <laughs> I can't exactly display it like this. That doesn't look great. So that's where you're gonna go ahead and use this last option, which is the rotate tool. Um, and you can see the green one kind of rotates it on that axis. Um, the red will rotate, oops, sorry, the reddish one over here will rotate it around and then the yellow uh, will also rotate it in like a different control pattern and then the blue will rotate it this way. So you can really control things quite a bit, which is awesome. Um, but you'll see here now I've kind of like, I don't know, I, if this were me on my own, I probably wouldn't even try to reposition this. I'd probably just re-upload it because getting this thing to be straight again is going to be a challenge. Uh, that's kind of the best job I can do. Yeah, maybe I can do a little bit better, but you get the point. So that's what I would do uh, to do that. So let's go ahead and, so now let's say you did mess it up and you're like, oh no, what do I do? Well, 
you can just press this remove button and then you can always re-upload it just like that. And now I'm going to, instead of choosing what I did before of like changing it way too many times, I might just want to quickly or simply rotate it like that. That looks pretty good. Let's move it back against the wall. Oh, and you'll see there it kind of like disappeared slowly into the wall. That is a good indication that it's not actually straight. And when I go to the wall, I can see, yes, it is still a bit on an angle. So maybe, oh, no, 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 get back here. There we go, like that, that looks a lot better. There we go, perfect. So let's get it up on this little wall here. And now we wanna make it slightly bigger. Yeah, that looks good, right? Well, you can't reply, this is a recording. Uh, okay, that looks good to me. So next, the, what you're gonna wanna do, or what you can do, is you can play around with some of the other options. Um, come on, oh, no, why did it load in the dictionary? Um, so now you might, so here, this pin button is really important. If you don't pin your piece, it won't save when you reload it. So this is kind of more like a save button than it is a pin button. So there you go, it is now pinned. If I were to refresh this now, it's going to save. Lock disables you from moving it again. So if I press lock, you'll see now I, I can't, oh, oops, why does it keep, anyway. I can't use any of my rotate or remove actions or stretches. To undo that, you just press the lock button. You do have to exit this one, and there we go. And now it works. Uh, but let's keep it locked because I don't want to accidentally remove it. And then the other options you have here is yet to remove it. Physics, I don't know what physics do. It hasn't been important for me, so we're gonna skip that. Next, what you might wanna do is leverage some of the components. So right now there's a cool one called NFT template. And what this does is it allows you to create an OpenSea reference. And so what you do is you go to your file on OpenSea, you copy the link, you come back here. Now I have noticed, oops, Oh yeah, some, every now and then you will get into a world where you kind of lose your mouse um, and it just, you know, see it's following me way too easily and I can't click on anything. That does happen every now and then. What I have found is it's just best to refresh. But that's why pinning is really important because if I hadn't have pinned, I would have lost my progress there. And I would have had to re-upload this image, resize it, re-rotate it and everything like that. But luckily I pinned it, so I didn't have to worry about that. So next, let's say you wanted to go back to this component here. We go to the NFT one. You'll notice here, pasting doesn't actually work. Like I'm pressing Command V and it's entering a V, which is strange. But there is the paste OpenSea link from clipboard button. If you press that, it actually goes. And then you just press this little orangey button here. And what it'll do is it'll import your object, which for us is this nice, um, NFT template, and you can see here that the it uploads the title of the piece, the description of the piece, the artist and the owner, and the current price and stuff. Some of this is not uh, fully great today, and this link will actually link out to the OpenSea piece, which is cool. So if you're looking to display stuff, you can link out to it from there. Now, you'll see, oh, oh didn't mean to do that. Um, it's not straight. Oh, looks like we're gonna have to refresh again which means I see, and because I did not pin that one, I lost it. So what we're gonna do here is pretty simple. We're just gonna go back. Luckily, we didn't make it too far. Paste again, do that. But this is a valuable lesson because you might run into the same issue. And instead of being like me and having to redo it, you're gonna remember that when you import something, you should, oh, wrong one, um, you should pin it. Sweet. So now you want to rotate it again along the green is mostly what I use uh, to do that. Let's just check. Yep, that looks good to me. And now you're going to push it back. And like that. There we go. And that's kind of, I mean, you can stretch it out a bit. Maybe you wanted to make it a little bit bigger for people to read. And now I just want to make sure that it's centered. Yeah, that that looks more or less centered, I think. Yeah, okay. And then you can lock it, just like before. And that's, you know, 
Oh, and spacebar is to do this like jumpy floaty thing. But careful because if you do jump too far, you end up on the roof. And unfortunately, I have learned if you get stuck on the roof, you can still see everything, which is cool, <laughs> but you get stuck. So once again, best way is just to refresh and then you're back. Uh, now, let's say, oh yeah, sometimes it does take the NFT plates a minute to load. Uh, now, let's say you wanted to do things a little bit more custom, uh, which I do in our case. One of the things that I've found that's pretty cool is you can actually, so let's unlock this. I'm gonna remove this NFT plate. I actually designed our own NFT plate in Figma um, and used a QR code generator, um, just this thing called QR code monkey, um, which allowed me to customize a couple of things. I was able to make this QR code. And the reason I like this is because you get a little bit more control over how it looks. Um, and whoops, that's the wrong one. Sorry about that. There we go, this one. Um, oh. oh, I see what, uh, that's okay. That'll work. Uh, the name of this post is wrong, but I can, you, you get the point. So you can import your own little card here. And once again, we're just gonna rotate that 90 degrees. That looks right. And then we're going to oop, move it back a little bit up. And then we're gonna stretch it out a bit so that it's legible as people walk by. And now we move it. And there you go. And you'll see, and don't forget to pin and lock. And so the reason I like this is because as you're looking at it, it just looks, I don't know, better. It looks cleaner. And I liked the look for our gallery. Um, you can also add your own logo and stuff like that into the QR codes. If you're building a gallery of pieces you've collected or something like that, or maybe you put the OpenSea logo to differentiate between a Hen logo or Rarible logo or Foundation logo to indicate which platform that piece is mainly on. Uh, Next, there's, I'll show you some cool things or different things. So let's say maybe you're looking at one of these walls to put your piece. You'll notice that when you go to the edit tool and you put out your piece again, uh, it comes, oh, that one's not as noticeable. Um, but one of the, the things to note, um, oh no, that's fine. Let's, where was I showing this? Um, maybe it's on this side. Well, anyway, what I was trying to tell you is sometimes when you're putting a piece down and if that ever happens or it just disappears, just use the edit button again and it'll come back. Or if it gets too far like that, once again, just try to exit out and press the edit button and it'll reload. Uh, but let's say you did this post again. Uh, you'll actually see what I'm trying to show you in a second. I'll show you. the. The collar, if you look, I'm gonna pin real fast. The collar should actually be to the right of her snout and over here, it's on the left. Um, and this is because when I rotated it, I just rotated it 90 degrees. So it's actually flipped on the X axis or sorry, Y axis. And the way to get around that is just uh, unlock the post, click it. Once again, go back to the post, click it. And you can actually just rotate it fully uh, again. So you can do a full rotation and that's how to invert your post. Uh, but that's important. Sometimes it just imports the wrong way, depend or not the wrong way. It's just that the wall you're on is inverted and now it should look like the original. You'll see collar on the right, collar on the right. I didn't even notice that the first time we were doing it because her face is pretty symmetrical. <laughs> Good job, Oshi. So that is how you flip things. Um, obviously that becomes more important with different pieces where the flow of the piece from left to right matters. Uh, so yeah, just keep an eye on that. And if it does happen to you, you have that rotation tool that allows you to change things completely. Uh, and that's really about it. That is how this tool works. Um, and so I hope you have a lot of fun with it. Drop your galleries, tag us on Twitter at Coco NFT. Uh, love to see what galleries you work on and come check out some of the ones we're building. All right. Cheers, everybody.